Hi, I'm Dick Termas. Today we're going to get into shading. Shading is like the coolest part of this. Uh, and shading is an interesting thing. We're, I'm doing, I'm going to show you a real extreme shading. And later you can back off and have more subtlety to it. But I think to start with, you got to know how to really blast the shading into your uh, uh, drawing and then later back off and figure out other ways that you might want to be more delicate with it because this is not delicate. Uh, when you look at the cube, uh, there's, uh, there's, uh, th the lighting is what shading is all about. And the lighting, you can see on this cube right here, with the strong light coming in, this is the white side. And in my kind of shading, there's a white side, there's a black side, and there's a gradation side. And all of the jobs that they are doing is to bring out the edges, the edges of the sphere or the cube. So as you can see here, white side, really dark side, I think it's showing that way, and a gradation side. And all the edges show up because of shading. So that's what we're going to be getting into. And shading is not the same thing as, as a cast shadow. When I sort of ignore cast shadows in this, I think of the, the kind of shading that's going on the sides is what's going to bring out the object. And the, the cast shadow actually takes away from the object popping out. So I just ignore that. And in most of my own paintings, I ignore cast shadows unless they're part of the subject of whatever it is I'm focusing on for that piece. So we have a really cool video that uh, is extremely good, I think, and shows a lot of the tech, this technique that I'm talking about, this extreme shading. So I hope you'll take a look at it. Now that we have all the tools for drawing and for the contour lines, all of this is very important to know before we get to the shading. If you have a line in shading, in order to show up, it has to have a dark side and a light side to it. What I like to think is if you put a line down and in the end you could take that line away and it would still be there and the shading does a job for it, that's really good shading. Now you can see that the shading is actually creating the line that you see up above. So if you were to take the beginning line away, it would still look exactly the same. Light is the most important thing in shading. Depending on where the light is located, of course, on the cube, that's what's going to create the brightness and the darkness on the cube. So keeping that in mind, as you draw the cube, probably the best place for the light to be is up above and off to one side of the cube. So it creates one side really, really dark. How do you get that light top to show up so bright like that? Background darks. And the background darks have to be as dark as the dark side of the cube. The contour in the background can be much more loose because there isn't really a structure to that. But every line that you draw the cube with should be substituted with darkness and lightness on the two sides of the line. Now we're going to stack a cube on a cube, and the same thing applies. You figure out where the light's going to come from, and that side will create the top being light, one side will be dark. Remember the contour surface lines? That's what the directions of your stroke should be going. If you want the shape to look like the shading belongs on that surface, you have to think about what was the contour surface lines and what direction did they go. See, all of the lines that I'm putting strokes on this with are contour surface lines. Some places I am allowing the lightness to stay there, some places the darkness to be there. But every line in the end has to have a dark and a light side if you do this properly. We're going to actually cut a hole in the front of this and show how the shading has to go inside the hole, too. Beans, there's lots of darts around. You have to shade and then go to light very quickly, or it isn't going to work very well. See, I'm still sticking with the contour surface line. So all of that contour surface line stuff 
is very important when you get into the shading because it helps you to know what that shape is that you're looking at. Now here comes the sun around the cylinder and you can see it reacts to the light in a different way because it's a smooth changing surface shape. When you construct the cylinder you have to put the dark on the opposite side of the sun you have two different contour lines. Remember your contour lines. One runs up and down, one runs with the curve of what the top of the cylinder looks like. This gradually changes from dark to light and that gives you the sense that it's actually a rounded off surface. The top of this cylinder is being flattened out by the lines that I'm selecting are running horizontal. That's going to flatten out the top so it has no hole in it. When you want the top of the cylinder to look like a hole in shading, the stroke should be going vertical rather than horizontal, and that'll take your eye down inside the cylinder. Now we're back to the drawing of the birthday cake, and we're going to apply some shading to it. I put a sun over to the right side, so it's lighting up one side of the cake, which is all based on cylinders. But in order to make the flames look like they're glowing, you've got to really get some darks around them. See how I've added the stroke to kind of flare it out from the flames on the candle? That really helps to make it look like it's lit up a little bit more. Otherwise, every line has to have a dark and a light side once again. This is a cylindrical study. It looks like ribbon candy, kind of. But it's based all on cylinders and the shading would be done exactly like you would shade the cylinder. Every line has to have a dark and a light side. You have the sun over there to the left side. So look at the object a little bit. You can kind of figure that out, where it would be the darkest, where it would be the lightest. The contour surface lines, very important again to run the strokes of your pencil to the proper contour. You can see it just goes on and on into the spirals inside and outsideness of the cylinder. So here we have a sphere with the light coming high above it over to the left side and where it hits the sphere is the lightest spot. The darkest is on the opposite side. Now we're going to leave it very very light but anytime there's a stroke it should be using the contour surface lines. One of the things that always gets missed when people shade spheres is that background. That background has to be as dark as the darkest part of the sphere if you want it to jump off the page. Now this one, the light is around on the back side of the ball. So I'm starting with the contour surface lines on the dark side and working them out to the light side. So it's kind of just a different way to handle the sphere, depending on where the light happens to be flowing. Put more pressure on the pencil when you're in the darks and lighten up the pressure as you go out and then go to pure white on the one side. So we're going to try reversing that concept with this. We're going to start with an all black sphere and then we're going to add light to it. So now we're going to put a sun up in the sky and put some light on this dark ball. There's one of the sets of contour surface lines. There's the other set of contour surface lines. And they have to be focused mostly on that spot up on the top. So it has to almost wipe out all the black in that area and leave it dark on the other side. And we have to get the background in there yet too. Now the darks come into it and completely fill up the space on that dark side to snap out the light side of the ball. Welcome back. I'm glad you are sticking with us. This is uh, uh, a, a drawing I did last night just to try and, and so we didn't have to watch me draw all of this. Uh, it takes a little bit too long to do this in front of you. So but what we're going to be using are the shading techniques that you uh, have just looked at and see if that extreme shading can actually um, make this look like a 
pretty interesting uh, uh, drawing. And w the first thing we need to do is determine where we want the light to hit. And I'm going to have the light hit sort of on, uh, I'm going to put the sun over here, okay, and I'll erase this later. And, you know, don't try and draw along with me on this. Just kind of watch this first and then, then uh, take on, because there's, well, it's not only the shading, it's the decisions that you have to learn to make as to which patterns should be dark, which should be light. When you pay attention to where the light is, when you don't pay attention to where the light is, uh, the main thing in the end is you want this to, to really jump out and, and show up. And like, like we've talked, you know, this is extreme shading. This isn't delicate shading. The, I always figure you've got to know how to make it really pop first, and then secondly, you can be subtle. But first you need to know how to do it so it really pops. So I'm gonna actually have the front, this front side be the light side. Uh, the, the sun is actually around the corner slightly. It's coming in at this, so this will be the dark side. So, um, and then uh, I'll talk, uh, you know, also the strokes that I make, remember the contour surface lines. So I'm gonna darken this side of, of this building and try and work it with the contour that fits that building, which is up and down. Now also, remember I'm <laughs> using a pen whereas I would rather be using a pencil for you, but it's, I think this shows up better. So I'm gonna have some of my strokes will maybe show up and that will bring out the light side or the dark side of this. Now already you can see it's starting to snap. So if this is a dark side, this also, any of the same planes should be the same um, darkness or lightness. So this would also be dark, and it'll, what it'll do is pop out that light window over on this side. And once in a while I have to kind of crowd in so I don't get too jiggly. So there's a, a, the window there. And you have another dark side. So if these are dark sides, I'm gonna just get to the real realism here first then this would also be a dark side here. And I, I'm gonna, I usually try and point my pencil at the edge that I'm drawing all the time. If I'm trying to make a sharp edge, point it. Don't come in this way and try and get that edge. So that's, that's just one of the little techniques that I find are pretty important. I'm trying to run with the, the contour of this. This is gonna make this little fence pop out because it'll stay very white. We'll get these buildings to kind of snap first, like so. And then secondly, we'll get into the, the landscape more. All right, so you can see that would be a dark side also. Um, and if then if this is going to be the white side, these little windows would be dark. That makes them pop out. And everything is going to be extreme. I'm going to have the, the, the door open here. Maybe I'll have an extra little edge here, but then this will be open so it'll be, you'll be looking back into the barn. This is actually a barn just down the street from me that I took this idea from, this image from. The house is not there, but. Okay, so we've got a couple of darks here. Now, if we want the, the, uh, this side to be light, well, let's see, I think maybe we could have the, the, the way, I'm gonna actually stick with the top of the roof mostly light. So this will be gradually fading. And I'll just kind of go out like this, because in the end, Every one of these lines that I've drawn should have a dark or a light side to them. That's, that's the technique that we're trying to use on this. Every, every line should have a dark side. Now see, I'm getting a dark side on this, on the bottom end. The top side, I'm gonna leave very white. So I'm just shading this across, and it's what I call, a, it's a gradation sort of shading. It goes, starts from dark, but it ends up 
actually going to very much light down below. We'll try that to start with. We'll see if that is working. And then if I'm going to keep, uh, I'm going to keep this the whitest side right here. I'll put a W there right now. So I re am reminded that these are going to be the white sides. Later I'll erase that. But that means that this roof up on the top, the, the contour of it would run like the outside lines, like so, and would have the other cross hatch would run this direction. Now this would be nice and blended with your pencil. So then the, the more time you take on it, the better it's going to look. It's like I, I always talk about shooting baskets. You know, they get, if you don't take time to practice shooting baskets, you're not going to get very good at it. And same way with this. Okay, to bring out this white roof, I'm going to have this tree be dark back here because that will bring out this line right here if this tree is dark. And, you, you know... Um, this is where a lot of times people will say, hey, but that tree is light back there that I'm looking at. Well, if you want the roof to stand out, you gotta have it be dark. So you have to, con you have to not let nature control you, you have to control it, is the idea. And a tree can be very organic strokes as far as um, the contour surface lines. They really, it really can be sort of loose like that. Now see how that's made that line show up? And that's what's important. And even this top line, I, I can make this become white back here, but that means that background, which will help bring out the top of the tree. And I'm gonna exaggerate this up a little bit bigger and make this tree line back here be dark. So this whole row of, of trees are gonna be basically very dark. And like I say, when we, once we get through the high contrast, Later, you can work with, there's a lot of other stuff that would, goes into a drawing, like gradations of going back in space. Sometimes it fades out more and more and more. But right now, we're sticking with, with this. So now we've got this showing up very well. The barn is showing. Uh, this edge of the barn right here uh, might be, uh, this is probably going to be a gradation here too. It'll be dark right up against this. And then as it comes up the hill, we'll gradually fade it out into white because we need the white against that dark side. So we're going to work darks down in here and work with the contour of, of the grass that would be growing up here. Like so, and very, very dark right in there. Now see how it brings out that corner of the barn. That's what we're trying to do. Okay, now let's just go into the background here because we want this little pattern right here, this one right here, to be white because we want it to bring out the sides of that. That means that these trees should be a darker color back behind here. And it also is going to bring out that cylindrical. These are cubes, of course. Here we have a cylinder. I'm going to get rid of this because that kind of disturbs me. We want darks back in here. And a little, a little piece of dark running into, into it actually is artistically a good idea. Uh, even though we're trying to have as much as possible the lines all be dark, light, all the way through this, that little piece right there running into it is not going to hurt anything. All right, so we've got that going. And if it's, if it's dark here, probably it's going to look best. Uh, well, let's see. Now we've got the dark coming on this side. That means a cylinder it wa wants to be dark on that side. See the contour that I'm using there, just like what you learned earlier? And, and it's, this is the other contour that comes across. And yours would be very soft and gentle as it comes across over here. And this little plant that's right down below it there is going to stay light because it's got darks in the background. So don't be, if you put dark, a dark pattern next to a dark pattern, it's not going to be good because you're going to lose the pattern. So what do you do with this tree back here? If this is dark, you'd think, okay, that's got to be dark too. 
Well, maybe make it dark over here and fade it. You'll be amazed how um, just even uh, the, the, the dark, when you know it should be dark, if it looks good, you don't actually notice it. So I'm going to have it come, these darks, for the, bringing out that little spruce tree. They're going to be nice and dark there too. And then it gradually fades to, so that this line has some lights against it so it brings out the back side. The difference again, here it shows up the uh, sh shading versus a shadow. You know, I don't overly worry about shadows. I've talked to you about that, but uh, I don't worry about shadows be because if I were to put a shadow on this, it'd be a big dark spot out here and I'd lose that line. So with this protect particular technique, shadows, I just ignore shadows totally. Ex uh, some people say, think, well, shadows are also that on the dark side of the building, which is very true, but I'm thinking of cast shadows. I'm ignoring that part. So, uh, okay, so I have a, a very light tree coming here, and I've got trees coming here. I'm going to actually add a, a few more uh, trees in the background on this side so that that tree, uh, if, if things are small little details of stuff, it's, it's really better not to add a whole lot of shading to little tiny details. It's better to have them be all light or all dark or all kind of dark and gray sort of in between. Okay, so now we've determined those trees are dark, so that pattern back here has to be a white or a light. And so that means the trees should be dark in the background here. And some could be a little bit lighter, some could be a little darker, you know. But you can see now it's bringing out that line right there, dark on that side, light on this side. So if you just constantly are thinking about that, that's, that's what it's all about, this technique. And you'll, you'll find your, your pictures will jump right off the page. All right, so we're going with that. Now I'm going to jump back over here and Bet, put darks behind this light uh, uh, roof. So well, that means this is going to be basically a dark, a dark tree. All right. And it'll bring out that chimney. I found these little Q-tips are really good for erasing on this. You can get down into the details. All right, so we've got kind of, you can imagine that's all shaded in quite well. And you want it to look cool, too. It's got to be an artistic shape. That's a little bit better there. You don't want lines to line up. If you have this tree line up with the top of that roof, that's not good. You don't because it confuses the viewer that's trying to figure out what it is you're you're expressing. Um, okay, and and the same way with this, this could this would have darks along this side that are going to fade off into whites. So we're going to start here, fade that off, follow the contour of that surface, and try and get it as as dark as you can. And when it comes up against this edge, fade it out fast so that it basically gets to have some lights there. All right, so and we could use a little bit of this, especially if you're doing a pen and ink. This, this, what I'm doing is really a, like a pen and ink drawing, except it's pretty fat lines. It helps it show up though. Okay, so this, the idea here is to get this to really fade and just blend into so you don't even notice all of a sudden it's just darks right up there okay so now we're getting that whole edge to show up um, we want that means this is a dark tree this is probably going to be white back here that means these trees can be a dark color also and that'll help bring out some of that that edge of that of that roof all right and we're going to just carry that along over here And maybe just while well do that one, it makes makes it flow a little bit better.
and it could fade out a little bit so that the branches could kind of, the trunks of the trees could show up a little bit. All right, so that's actually helping. This is helping this edge of white show up a little bit better. Uh, we've got a little touch of, of, of line right there. Now, if you don't do anything, you see you're going to have that. Now, artistically, that's kind of cool, but with this technique we're doing, um, a little bit of shading in here, and if you do it very delicately, you won't really overly notice it's even there, but the roof will stand up that much more. All right, then let's go. Let's keep moving here. If this is uh, if this is going to be light here, we want right next to the house to be basically dark, at least over on this side and along this side. So that means this whole pattern can be dark. All right, we're moving along here okay and if that's dark uh, let's see oh we've got the these uh, edges these the uh, little stairway coming off and this is going to work out pretty pretty well i'm going to switch this over to be uh, the dark side here a little bit it won't make any difference and that little step so that that stairway and then we'll put a little grass down here to help make that look like it fits on the ground. All right, so there, there's the little stairway coming off. In order to maybe add a few darks right here along the top of this, that'll make the door show up nice and, nice and light against the edge. Okay, and then we've got, okay, we're going, let's go back to this, this roof over here which we want it to be white too, like this is, because it's on the same plane. That means that let's start some darks in here and work them right into there and work that all the way across. That's going to pop that tree up a little bit, which is good. This is the kind of stuff you don't, you know, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with this till I actually get on the drawing. And it sort of tells you as you what whatever decisions you make along the way determine the next decision. I mean, and, and uh, it, probably the first pattern you fill in is predetermining almost the whole the whole thing. But you don't quite know that till you to take the risk of filling in one part of it. Okay, so this is a fading in sort of area too. Uh, I don't really, I'm going to keep this kind of a gray up in here so it'll bring out the top of the roof, but I don't want to crowd that too much because I'll lose that line of the right there. And so we'll keep it tucked in kind of close here. This is kind of using the, the left side of your brain, I think, uh, and, and, and doing your drawing with the, the left side somewhat. All right, so now we've got that all going. I'm going to jump back. Let's see here. We've got a lot of stuff going on here. This probably would be best to be uh, a light area here to bring out uh, the details of that. And I could, I'll come in here and at least get this started where I add darks in between the boards here. I'm going to make sure I leave the boards. So for the corral. And every other one of these need to be dark background. I'm going to add one more in here because I seem to be missing a board. Come down to here. So that whole area. Helps to bring out the. And then this can be actually grass. Notice how I do that. I, I uh, like even here. I'm I'm just having the pattern, but there is a grassy pattern on the top there. And as this comes out, okay, then that's going to be that's going to be dark back here too. 
We'll continue that and that'll bring out the light line right there if we have some darks behind it. Let's see if we can pull that off. So we're going to fill this in. I'll maybe add the details into what I'm drawing too, the details of the grass. And you can see I don't want to have these darks go all the way up because I've got darks to bring out a light line there. So this stuff has to gradually fade into white as it comes up in order to bring that top part out. This is the stuff I'd probably take, you know, a week, <laughs> two weeks <laughs> to do this. But I'm just trying to get the idea across to you here. It's kind of a cool, cool way to approach a drawing. And a lot of people don't think about all of this when they're doing a drawing. And I think it's, it just helps make your piece show up a little bit better. All right, so we, that means this is going to be dark here coming down, and that's going to be a little um, canyon over there. All right, and actually, uh, the beans, I think this would be a good decision here, is the top of this could go into darks. And then the bottom, keep it white. That way, that, that's shifting into a white background. I can tell I'm going to want that to be white because the trees are dark in front of it. So, uh, and that means that this sky has to be dark, basically, and leave the clouds white. And like I say, the sky can also be pretty organic strokes. But what you do is try and bring, bring out the clouds with the stroke. But you can see now I'm bringing out these lines on the top of the, of the uh, little mountain range there. And, and then it has to get a little more precise again when it gets close to the cloud so that the shape of the cloud shows up. All right, and so we're just kind of jumping around here. If we have darks here, it's saying we need some darks. Either this hill is going to turn dark, and we could do that. We could actually Let's see, let me get the rhythm going here. We've got darks coming across here. Then we want that to be light. We want this to be sort of dark through here. So that we want those plants to be light. It's just kind of a dark light pattern study that you that you have to kind of play with and and see what and in these plants could be uh, light here and dark over here, but you want to look at what what are you going to do here? This I think this this has a feeling like it's going to be dark. So I'm going to actually put the yucca plant there. I guess that's what that is. Into the darks and whatever these plants are, and. This is actually when I paint, I, I work in reverse like this sometimes. I'll, when I'm painting the background, I'm creating the foreground by, by the strokes that I'm using. So that grass down below is actually created a lot of times by running a stroke down in like that. And then I end up with, with that showing up too. And maybe we can even, it's getting closer so we could get some little details in some of this of grass and the seed, seeds and stuff. So that, that can have a little bit more detail to it. Is, yeah. All right, and then we'll just continue with this over here till it fades off over in there somewhere. Details up on the top and details down in the bottom. So 
The bottom details are creating the next shape, the next grass pattern that's coming across there. The top of it is creating the, the details of what's in that dark pattern. I presume everybody works that way, I don't know, when they're doing art pieces. A lot of this you kind of learn as you, after 40, 50 years of painting. So, okay. And let, let me just add a couple more little things here. And, uh, and you can see this would, in the end, would all turn dark. Um, I'm not going to be able to finish this whole piece. But down through here, you would probably do a dark light, dark light. Like this pattern would probably be dark. And then th this would be light, this would be dark for the canyon stuff to show up and then the background behind that. So you just alternate your darks and your lights down through here and uh, you'll get that canyon to really show up all, all the way through that. Just alternate dark light, dark light, dark light. So, uh, and, and I might just darken this little window here and that one just, maybe it's kind of broken up, looks like a checkerboard there, but so maybe some windows are tilted a little bit. Um, and you can see that's the basic idea. Darks back in here to bring out that tree, a little part of the tree, maybe this one. And that could be left light. But extreme shading is an interesting way to start off. And then, like I say, you know, once you get going, um, you can be much more delicate with this and make lots of other kinds of decisions. Um, but I think it's, a, it's a, a great way to learn how to do this from the beginning. And uh, I'm going to stop at this point, and uh, I want you to stay tuned. And thanks for watching this episode. Keep watching for more. Thanks.